Type just by looking at them in the field. So again, I highly stress that. So again, you can look down and you can see all these different patches of stuff. Each one isn't an accident. So for example, just right below us, there's a strip of gray shrubs right there. Well, that's a little mm. slope. It's facing east. That's why those shrubs grow there. You can see out in the distance, the grassland. That's where it gets flooded out from the river. That's the riparian area. And then if you look real closely from here, we can actually see the next the next vegetation type. You can see the trees. I don't know if you can see the forest. See the forest up there on top of the mountain? Mm -hmm. Just right over there. Once we get to a certain elevation, we start to get trees. Because remember, when we get to 5,000 feet, the higher you go, the colder it gets. So at about 5,000 feet, it's cold enough that the moisture stays long enough that we got trees. So mm -hmm. different things happen there. Uh -huh. Look at the... Look at the slope here of this, the mesa facing south, how there's very little vegetation, I think, because it's facing top, and how the green firs are only growing on the top of the mesa or the bottom of the mesa, because that's where the soil is, you know, deep enough to hold them. They're not really growing on the slopes. And there is some creosote bushes. Those little kind of brown patches on that slope are actually creosote bushes, which are sneaking over. Can you hear me? <laughs> so, I'm just showing you all the different, there's a lot of different little things happening out there. The thing to notice, every one of those patches has something underlying happening to it. So, we call it Revele. I don't know how to spell that, but I think it's R-E-V-L-E-E. -E -E. It's a French word, Revele. Where we kind of look around and we get um, a visual census of all the different plant communities so we might have a piece of paper and we might write down oh I see a juniper plant community I see this plant community and then you look at the landscape and you give it a percentage you could say 25% of the land that I see is covered in X so that's one way to do it the other way we do it, has anybody heard of a transect transect yeah, transect with a T, T-R-A-N-S-E-T, -E transect, is where I take a piece of land. Let's say I, I, I go down there and I pick, I take a, a, a measuring tape that's 500 feet long or a couple yards long, and I just throw the measuring tape any direction. I just pick a line and I put the measuring tape out in a line. So then the next thing I do, we'll do this is I go count every different type of plant that touches the measuring tape. And I write down how many of them there are. So if I come across these manzanitas, right? Every time I see a manzanita, I count, okay, one manzanita. So I'm making a list of every different type of plant and how many there are. By doing that, I can look at that list from the transect and then determine what plant community I'm in. For example, let's say you didn't know where you were out here. You had no idea this is manzanita. A forest, but by looking at that transect, if you brought me 10 samples of this plant, because every the most common plant you found is this plant, boom, you're in a manzanita forest. That's how it works. So that's how people that don't know the plants, even though in forestry, can figure out where they're at, what they're doing, before any building is made in California, before any construction process is made. You have to know what plant community you're in to know what plants are for any endangered plants or animals, drainage problems. So huge jobs. Another big job field, has anybody heard of CEQA or NEQA? CEQA is the California Endangered Species Act and people make about sixty to $70,000 doing that on properties, going to properties looking to see what's rare and what's there. Um, 
So it's a really good thing to learn your plants, especially your native plants. I think it's more important to learn your native plants than the non-native plants because as things change in the economy and the environment, the native plants is where the money is going to be because it has to do with forestry, land use, water use, reclamation, restoration, less than 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 kind of frivolous things like landscaping and so on. So it's it's harder. This is a lot harder than the landscape ID, but it's more important in my opinion. Because just by being up here and looking at the landscape and knowing the elevation and the way the slopes change gives you a lot of power, gives you the power of information to tell people where they're at. People think they know where they're at, but they don't really know where they're at in relation to the rest of nature and the, the, the area that they're in. So that's why it's good to know. Very few people, you probably didn't even know you were this close to a, a border uh, between the two. So, and that's really neat. And in California, we do have a laws and regulations, but those laws and regulations are twofold. Yes, they kind of help, kind of stop business, but at the same time, they make a lot of business. Yes, we have to have laws for like uh, these endangered animals, but now we have a, a space for someone's job. So it's a twofold thing. And there's always, 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 always a deficiency in people that know their native plants compared to right now. So. If we're almost done, we're going to keep up, we're going to go over the hill, and then we're going to slowly head back. Really quick? Really quick? Yeah. That um, grassy area is man-made. That grassy area is man-made. Some of them are nice, but I saw the dam, and it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. That water area is nice. Yeah. 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 Here's a really cool area. This is all natural. Look man-made, but it's kind of... You guys have heard of decomposed granite, right? This is decomposed granite. Oh, this is a wildflower. This is our first wildflower. We're so happy. Okay, guys, so we found our first flower to actually give your, your quiz these questions on. So there's one for you guys, there's one for this end. Break into groups of six. So you guys, that side, you guys over here. Tell me, if you guys, amongst yourselves, figure out if that's a perfect, imperfect flower. First, let's see if it's if it's got boy yeah, and girl parts. We need the flower. Bush pop. Okay. <laughs> okay. First of all, let's dissect. Take your flower. Hold your flower like this, facing away from you. Okay, face it away from you. Okay, now grab a petal and slowly pull your petals off. You know you got a petal. Just slowly, I love you. You don't love me, I love you. Yeah, I don't love anybody. Okay, nobody loves me. Once you pull those off, you should see something. What are you looking at? What are those orange puppies? Yeah, the pollen's coming up. You can actually touch it. So those are the boys, right? Nope. Now, really carefully, see if we can find the girl. Yeah, see her. She's sticking right out the top. Yeah. Now pull off all the boys. Pull off all those boys. Yeah, so it's a definitely a perfect flower. He's so smart. There's the girl. Yeah, it's perfect because it's boys and girls. As soon as you see boys and girls, you know you got a perfect flower. It's bisexual. And you had petals, so now you know you got a complete flower. Are there sepals? There were no sepals. But that's okay. What's this called again? A bush poppy. Bush poppy. I am really bad. Okay, now, now here's another one. Having looked at that flower, do you think it's a monocot or a dicot? It's a dicot. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, exactly. Because if I were to show you, but don't worry about the teeples. The teeples. The teeples and teeples. Exactly. Some flowers don't have petals. So you guys got that? So that was a perfect flower. 
It was also complete. It had all its parts. Now, here is a trick question. The manzanita that we saw, was that, do you think that was a complete flower? No, not hoja blanca. Yeah, it was also. Mm -hmm. It had boys and girls also inside. The problem with that one was, remember, the boys were fused in the petals. So when I took the petal, ripped the petal off, it looked like there was nothing there. Perfect and complete. Huh? Well, complete means it has all its parts. Perfect means it has bisexual, so yes, it's both. Okay. So it's both. So if you say complete, it indicates both. Yes. Automatically. But perfect doesn't mean it doesn't indicate both. Right, right. <laughs> Which means it's perfect for mating. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait. Well, I have to avoid what you say. How much battery life do you have in your car? Um.